Now that I am a Jedi, I can do that. What's up, Meta Nerds? In this breakdown, we'll pull from every resource available from canon and legends to fully understand the Claudites, a remarkable humanoid species native to Zolan, who stand out for their unique shape shifting abilities, earning them their more commonly used name, Changelings. Zolan, their homeworld, is situated at grid coordinate P16 in the galaxy's mid rim, near the Corellian Run. The planet's environment is characterized as warm and arid, providing a challenging but constantly refining habitat for its indigenous species. The most significant event in the evolutionary history of the Claudites was a spike in solar activity that bathed Zolan in harsh radiation. This was the event that led to their distinct ability to alter their skin color and body shape, and this adaptation is akin to the abilities of the Monzu, which is a predatory species also found on Zolan. Such an evolutionary response indicates a high level of adaptability among Zolan's native species with many of them evolving unique survival mechanisms to cope with their planet's changing conditions, but we'll look more at this pivotal event in a bit. And also look at Zam Wessel, who was born on Zolan and became one of the most notorious members of the species. And we'll have to understand the Marbury, the ancient order of warrior knights native to this world. Glaudites in their natural state resemble reptilian humanoids, a form they inherited from their reptomammal ancestors. It's one of the most unique classifications out there, but it is seen in the Tauntauns, Rancors, Verks, and Faleen. They typically stand between 1.6 to 1.8 meters tall, with skin colors ranging from green to yellow, and eye colors that include shades of yellow, gold, or blue. They live around 70 standard years, which is shorter than most humans, and may be due to the increased stress of their unique genetically altered biology. Physically, they are characterized by sunken cheeks, narrow noses, and small mouths, with a distinctive line running down their foreheads and noses. Their eyes are large with slit-like pupils, and their skin is rough to the touch echoing the appearance of the Zolanders, their genetic predecessors. Of course, what sets them apart is that extraordinary shape-shifting ability, and though influenced by the environment, the way we see it today actually emerged due to genetic manipulation. They can alter the color and texture of both their skin and eyes in order to mimic the appearance of other humanoid species, easily pulling off humans or weak ways, although they cannot change their body mass. What's really interesting is that they can form or manipulate their hair and even mimic clothing or jewelry as long as these items are directly in contact with their skin, since all of this is essentially a manipulation of their skin's texture. It's freaky to think about, but you're not really looking at clothing. It's a complex 3D growth out of her body. Think about like if some aliens met humans and didn't know that hair or nails grew out of your body, they would think it's just some cosmetic attachment. The Claudite is able to mimic and grow these shapes and textures insanely fast, and it's all just different forms, colors, and textures of their skin. Though what was more often used was a holographic disguise, be a lot less painful, and other times that they could plan ahead or were maintaining a persona for a long time, they would just change their body and wear clothing on top. Claudite shape-shifting abilities develop with age, a skill that manifests in infancy and is used to communicate needs to their parents like a human infant might cry, while their ability to transform grows more sophisticated with maturity. However, unlike many other shape-shifting species like the Nagal Nagal or Neti, Claudites experience physical discomfort during each transformation. As they age in practice, they can push through this discomfort to achieve more dramatic changes in appearance, though they still struggle with the fine coordination needed to precisely mimic a specific individual. So these scenes where a Claudite is rapidly changing, they're actually going through excruciating pain, the peak of years of physical and mental training. Some exceptional Claudites, like Zam Wessel, have shown their ability to change their body structure or mass, which was previously thought impossible. It's hypothesized that she used the manipulation of water within her body, medical devices that could somehow regulate body water content, but no Claudites have subjected themselves to scientific study, likely due to fear of persecution or misuse of their abilities. At the core of their shape-shifting lies the control of their chromatophores, allowing them to change skin color and the manipulation of their lymphatic system, enabling them to grow or shrink body parts. These transformations are superficial, as they cannot replicate internal organs precisely. And while the galaxy at large might not understand their trick, Claudite sources show us that they use automated saline pumps to adjust their body fluid levels, thus enabling more significant changes even if there still is a max size they can get to. Despite their remarkable abilities, Claudites cannot maintain transformations under certain conditions, such as when distracted, injured, or upon death, where they will revert to their true form. Additionally, wearing heavy armor can impede the shape-shifting process, reflecting the physical limitations of just how hard this was to pull off. Claudite society, shaped by their unique shape-shifting, has developed a distinct culture centered around solitude and cautious interactions. 
Their innate ability to alter their appearance has fostered an environment of inherent mistrust within their communities. As you can imagine, that distrust is not unfounded, as the potential for a Claudite to either disappear with shared resources, or for an imposter to assume the identity of a known individual is always a constant concern. To mitigate these challenges, their society develops sophisticated methods of identity verification. Physical appearance is not relied upon. Instead, they focus on conversational cues and personality traits to recognize people. Their record-keeping and organizational systems are all designed with openness and redundancy, allowing for constant validation of individuals' actions and roles. You can imagine them developing some sort of blockchain tech. It would likely be amazing conversationalists as they evolve to not be able to use visual cues to judge people. Just vibes. Despite these measures, ensuring personal responsibility and accountability within the Claudite community has remained a complex issue up until modern times. And their view of the wider galaxy is pragmatic and often marked with harsh realism. They generally maintain a suspicious and mistrustful attitude towards others. Not all Claudites utilize their shape-shifting powers, but since they would all suffer this physical discomfort, they have complex practices of meditation and concentration techniques that are all used to push through and focus, and they even have some specialized oils that maintain the integrity of their skin, which can suffer from cracking or tearing when put through the insane strains of these complex transformations. While in their natural form, Claudites are virtually indistinguishable from their Zolander relatives. Though of course, genetic testing can reveal the difference. The physical similarity plays a role in the dynamics between these two groups, especially in the context of the Mabari, the ancient warrior order from Zoland. The Mabari are predominantly composed of Zolanders, and has historically been cautious in admitting Claudites, citing all the same problems Claudites have with themselves, knowing the trust issues that are brought when you have a shapeshifter in your midst. Claudites in the Mabari were closely watched, and those who left the order were often pressured to leave Zolan entirely. Mabari Armor Weave, worn by all members of the order, provides significant protection against energy-based weapons, but was less effective against kinetic attacks. And a complete set would include helmet, chest plate, gloves, belt, pants, boots, and a metal Kama-style skirt, available in all sorts of colors, and was similar in design to the armored robes of Zhao Shea and Zayson Shaw. And on Zolan, the Claudites faced significant prejudice from the Zolanders, who were deeply religious and held strong convictions about the Claudites' nature, considering them to be impure and sinful, unnatural abominations, views that all led to widespread discrimination. As a result, Claudites were relegated to living in slums all across the planet, confined to these areas by the Zolanders, hoping to prevent the spread of shapeshifters into the society at large. This systematic subjugation lasted for centuries, and beside that genetic manipulation itself, would have the second most profound impact on their society and culture. It wasn't until four years after the Battle of Yavin, following the rise of a new government, that Claudites began to see a change in their circumstances. They seized this opportunity to educate their youth, holding classes to teach Claudite children greater control and efficacy in using their shape-shifting abilities marking a significant step towards empowerment and self-determination within their community. I pause to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into their network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences when it comes to therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's through chat, text, or a video or phone call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule therapy sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch therapists for no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you'd expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom-picked for you, there's more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash metanerds. That's betterhelp.com slash metanerds. I've also linked them down in the description. Given their unique abilities, many Claudites who left Zolan pursued careers in militaristic professions as spies, assassins, and bounty hunters. These roles often aligned with their natural talents and offered them a chance to demonstrate loyalty, and they saw it as a positive contribution to the galaxy. Many Claudites were motivated by a desire to protect the liberties of other species, empathizing with their struggles due to the discrimination they faced on their home planet. In their interactions with others, most Claudites chose to maintain a single, preferred guise for all public dealings, and keep their true reptilian form hidden. This strategy allowed them to surprise adversaries and reduce the likelihood of being suspected as shape-shifting infiltrators. But there also were many that openly displayed their true form in public, thinking of it the other way around and only using their ability on very rare occasions. Regarding their language, while Zolanese was the native tongue of the Claudites, it was primarily used only in rural areas on Zolan, and was rarely heard off-world. Their language sounds like hissing and guttural croaks. 
Claudites were typically fluent in galactic basic standard and were generally reluctant to teach Zolanese to offworlders. However, in rare instances when Claudites encountered each other offworld, they could use Zolanese as a covert means of identification without having to shapeshift and revert back to their normal form, almost like a code language only another shapeshifter would understand. The history of the Claudites is a tale of transformation, persecution, and survival. There is a unique magnetic field on Zolar that neutralizes the effects of repulsor technology, meaning the first offworlders to visit them during the Old Republic era experienced catastrophic crash landings. And this effect resulted in them using rocket technology to get to space stations in orbit. But after millennia of this, with the rockets burning a chemical that proved to be especially toxic to their environment, it led to what was described as a permanent twilight due to the high levels of pollution. And if their luck couldn't get any worse, around 2000 BBY, Zolan was struck by a massive meteorite that carried some xenobiotic material, which resulted in a terrible disease infecting all major cities around the world. It infected skin cells and got deep into their tissues, altering their DNA, and leaving many with a skin that was extra sensitive to the ultraviolet light of their sun that was still going through its solar fluctuations, with many people experiencing mutations and experiencing oozing sores and intense burns. These people fled to space to get help from their medical stations that utilized cutting-edge tech provided by their alien allies. And while the gene therapy did effectively heal their skin to the point that it could handle their harsh sunlight, they quickly realized they had a new ability. As seamlessly as one could control their limbs, these gene-altered Zolanders could change their color, skin texture, and then shape of their body at will with a popular phrase warning against those that did not, quote, show their true face. Some played this off as merely meaning that one should be honest, but everyone really knew that it was a direct reference to the shape-shifting fear. And the creation of the Mabari, a knight order to protect the religious institutions, was created to ensure that the Zolander society did not fall to these mutants. Many dreamed of escaping into the larger Zolander society, but think about the constant pain they must have been in to maintain this cover in everyday life only being able to relax and let this costume fade away in the comfort of their own home. As the presence or even rumor of a Claudite often led to increased caution and vigilance at just about every level of Zolander society. However, off-world, they were sought after by just about every criminal organization and government intelligence branch. And they weren't all violent, it also included professions like technicians, explorers, and colonial roles. Though their predatory instincts in particular made them effective bounty hunters as well a career in which loneliness, isolation, and self-reliance were often the hardest aspects. Despite their ability and contributions, many Claudites lamented the fact that their society's cultural and technological achievements were often overshadowed by the fascination in their shape-shifting ability. They strove to be recognized for more than just their genetic traits, seeking acknowledgement for their intellectual abilities, though this never really caught on. And during the tumultuous times of the Separatist Crisis and Clone Wars, it didn't help that the most famous member of their species was an assassin. Zam Wessel found herself at the center of a high-profile assassination attempt against Senator Padme Amidala. Allied with Jango and Boba Fett, her mission ultimately failed, leading to her being tracked back and captured by Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. In a bid to silence her, Jango Fett killed her with a poisoned kyber dart. In a separate incident, the celebrated pugil athlete Roll Sat Novi was revealed to be a Claudite through a random blood test. Having posed as a Lannick for nine years, Novi's true identity caused a scandal, prompting him to flee off-world. Their political landscape shifted significantly during the Clone Wars. For the first time in their history, they formed a political government and sought the support of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, getting in contact with Count Dooku. They hoped this alliance would enable them to overthrow the Zolanders, and notable Claudites like Cato Parasiti and Braxis Lynn took active roles in the Separatist movement, with Parasiti assisting in a mission to steal a holocron from the Jedi Temple and Lynn working as a spy. However, the hopes pinned on Count Dooku were dashed with his death at the hands of Skywalker. The fall of the Republic and rise of the Galactic Empire brought new challenges, with Zolan being blockaded by Imperial forces, restricting Claudite movement even further and continuing their subjugation. However, their resilience shone through following the death of Emperor Palpatine. Inspired by the New Republic, they rose up against the Zolanders in the Zolan Civil War, eventually gaining control of a significant portion of their planet. Many Claudites also aided the Galactic Empire, with one posing as Gerizeb Aurelios to infiltrate the Spectres, although this attempt was thwarted. After the Civil War victory, the Claudites reached out to the New Republic, seeking membership in the new Galactic Government. However, these plans were interrupted by the Yuuzhan Vong invasion, leading to another devastating galaxy-spanning war. In response, Claudites formed Guile Company, an intelligence unit operating behind enemy lines. Despite suffering high casualties, which were even more impactful to their already small population, Guile Company became a symbol of the Claudites' tenacity and willingness to contribute to galactic affairs. 
Even after the war, Guile Company continued its operations, now under the Galactic Alliance, showcasing the Claudites' enduring spirit and their commitment to playing an active role in a galaxy that never could fully trust them. I want to close this breakdown with a few questions. One, do you think the Zoland Civil War would make for an amazing action horror kind of movie where you never know for sure who's who on screen? And do you think that chain codes could have worked to properly identify these species? The Empire wanted chain codes to act like a combination of DNA sequence placed on a blockchain with hopes of tracking every person in the galaxy in a database form that could not be hacked and changed. And knowing that DNA samples can be done with a simple touch, you can imagine sensors and doors in major buildings or ports having this ability to quickly read the person entering and thus cut right through their shape-shifting appearance. Comment your thoughts down below and hit that like button, it really is the best way to help me out. As for behind the scenes facts, Zam Wessel was played by actress Lena Walsman in Attack of the Clones, and she provided the voice for the same character in the game Star Wars Bounty Hunter. You're Django Fett, aren't you? I've heard of you, you know. I'm Zam Wazel. But Wessel was voiced by Diane Mitchell in the Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds expansion pack. Initially conceptualized as a villain for Attack of the Clones, in the early stages of writing the Episode 2 scripts, Wessel was referred to as CAT, CAT, standing for Corporate Alliance Trooper which could have been a really cool and rare look at the corporate alliance getting involved in galactic affairs, something that we've really only seen picked up on screen in the Andor show. But her first appearance is actually two months before the film, when the one-shot comic Star Wars Jango Fett. And she wasn't imagined as a changeling or a shapeshifter, this was developed later on in the process and seen during the principal photography of Attack of the Clones. And the actress who played Wessel didn't know the character's species. All of the transformation was done digitally in post-production, effectively superimposing a CGI mask over Walsman's face. And then later on in that Jango Fett comic series, we do see her changeling ability reflected, and then in the 10th issue of Star Wars Gamer. For a real-world comparison, the only thing close would be the ability to change color and texture seen in some octopus, cuttlefish, chameleons, and even flounders. And while there are some other fictions with similar characters or species like the Founders in Star Trek, Mystique from X-Men, or the Thing and T-1000 Terminators, with the Terminator really being the closest as a giant blob of nanomachines would be the most likely way to mimic something like the Claudites, as it just seems so evolutionary unlikely for an organic creature to ever develop this. So who knows, maybe some solar event and or CRISPR could give us some future humanoid creature like this one day, and everybody will just trust each other even less. Either way, hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and check out these videos, I'm sure you'll like them. But most important of all, remember, you can never definitively disprove that everyone you know is secretly a shapeshifter. And the Force will be with you. Always.